Hi, everybody. How you doing? And again, this is a video for both sections. So, um, and look, I just wanted to, you know, before I get into the um, data journalism segment of our course, and also the assignment that actually I posted today, um, it'll be due on December 13th. I just want to say thank you very much for a semester that could still <laughs> certainly could be considered trying. I realize this is really unprecedented for me. I mean, uh just having it divided into two sections like it like it was and and um you know at one point i decided that i thought that was actually kind of because i felt like um we were kind of like proceeding on two different tracks in a way i had a guest speaker i was able to get a guest speaker for instance in, in the one section that i wasn't able to get for the other section so it seemed for a while rightly or wrongly we could i could revisit this decision but it happened but you know, I mean, handling the two sections is two different classes, essentially, with the same material. Um, but uh, for, for what it's worth, uh, this on this uh, assignment and on this, in this component of the course, I'm going to bring you both together. Um, and I just want to thank you for like everything, um, you know, putting up with the semester and the whole idea of actually being back in class and the wearing of the masks and um, keeping up with everything. And, you know, it was difficult for me, I'll admit. Um, and I'm sure it was difficult for you too. So I totally understand it. I try to be understanding, especially with some of the, you know, some of the assignments where people have had trouble getting them in, um, especially like the videos, <laughs> which I guess were incredibly large sizes and, you know, were tough to post and stuff like that. And people not getting the message correctly. You know, also I noticed that people would, you know, having the two different assignment entries, it's one assignment entry for one section, another assignment for the other section, even though it was the same assignment, was confusing the people I could tell because sometimes people would post in the wrong section. But I did manage to eventually catch up. So, um, so anyway, um, uh, all right, so <clears throat> we're gonna talk about data journalism. Uh, and this will be the final assignment again December, for both sections i'm going to create just one i just created one entry for both sections section one and section two that's section one being the monday class and section two being the thursday class okay another reason why i'm doing this just so you know is that um you know as i talk to I talk to the monday class about this but there's we're scheduling this year thanksgiving typically we have classes on on wednesday um but we don't this year, so they actually moved the Wednesday class to Monday, so there's no Monday class. So, and of course, there's no Thursday class because of Thanksgiving. So, I want to make sure everybody has like enough time to do this last assignment, um, and uh, which essentially will be uh, due about three weeks from now. Okay, um, this being posted on Tuesday, November twenty third. Okay, I also wanted to make sure that you got this because <clears throat> you know again Wednesday is supposed to be an off day, so. I want to make sure that you know you got this on a day when we actually are having classes actually or maybe being active in school and that sort of thing before you go home for the thanksgiving weekend and i certainly wish you all a good thanksgiving weekend all right so <clears throat> anyway data journalism okay let me uh show the screen here again this is going to be an asynchronous lecture okay um i would suggest strongly suggest that you look at this <laughs> because we're looking at it now I was really look at this whole thing asap okay we will be following up on this lecture once we get back to class okay um all right so here is my screen you know i also teach writing for media and actually that's an asynchronous class so i'm doing the same thing here i'm doing for that all right um all right so data journalism basically is probably one of the i would say most uh Business journal, I would say business journalism has actually thrived more than the other, any other section of journalism in the data age, in the digital age, more than any other section of journalism, I would say. Um, so if you were asking me that question, basically, what's done well in, within the uh, framework of internet? I would say business journalism. Business journalism is also the, um, the uh, area of journalism that actually seems to almost thrive on the whole 24 seven operation. And that's something we've been dealing with for 25 years, but it really like with it didn't really like 
whole idea of actually like going to a phone or a computer actually really didn't really take off again, as I've probably talked about before until like the late 2000s, maybe around 2010 or so, right around the time the iPhone was perfected and they get the that Verizon as a carrier <laughs> and it being much more, much easier. But I would say if there was an area of journalism that kind of essentially grew into a force, not just actually like thrive, but actually grow into a force, it essentially is the, the data journalism. And that, that's, that's where I'm going to deal with essentially, when I talk about the five tools of journal, data, digital journalism. This is going to deal with the graphic end of things, okay? This actually, this, this assignment will actually deal with all five ends of journalism. Um, so actually, before we do that, let me uh, pause for a sec. There is actually another, one other thing I wanted to say is actually that we will we'll be actually talking about grading too. So I'll go over first before we get into the data journalism assignment. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I promised some of you that I'll be doing that. So here we go, okay. Um, all right. So. Basically, in the syllabus, I talked about how I grade in the beginning of the semester, I grade um, the final assignments, the last assignments get bigger weight than the first assignment. So um, let's look at that for a sec. I can call it up. <laughs> okay. So you remember that is 70% of your overall grade is the written assignments, okay? And 30% is class participation, okay? I mean, I didn't, you know, didn't really have discussion points, but, you know, turning things on time, watching, um, you know, engaging in, you know, different things, basically. Well, I mean, if I ever had discussion points, that would be part of it, obviously, yes. Um, but obviously, the biggest factor would be attendance, okay? I realized that was an issue for people and everything, and I definitely think your, your reasons for maybe having to be excused and that sort of thing, the consideration, I know we had issues with that. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, because I mean, we have people who are outright, outright injured and everything, you know, doing whatever, people being sick, or whatever. So, um, you know, but, you know, I would say these were the, really the two things most, that were most important to me. Okay. Um, all right. As far as the actual written part, so that's 70% of your overall grade. So, out of that, 70%, we had five assignments, okay? So you might remember that actually, um, I, I hope to have more assignments. And I said that basically the second to last assignment would count twice as much as the previous assignments. Okay, so that would be the uh, Murphy assignment. The Murphy assignment was the second to last assignment. I'm sorry, not the Murphy assignment, the megalomania assignment, which, you know, I extended deadlines on those. Um, that would be that would be a second to last assignment. So that will count twice as much as the previous um, three, okay? Um, and, um, right, and then the data journalism assignment will actually count four times as much as the first three, okay? Yes, so it's basically the first assignment counts once, the second assignment count once, the third assignment counts once, fourth assignment counts twice, and the fifth assignment counts four times. So what does that break down to, okay? Well, if you actually like go back to the assignments we had, okay? Um, all right, so our first assignment was the profile of the neighbor, okay? So that counts once. So that will equal out to 11%, out of that 70% of your overall grade, it's 11% of that 70%, okay? That's how it works out because it's, you know, that's how it's divided essentially, okay? The second assignment was the worksheets, okay? So that will be 11%, okay? All right, 11% for that, okay? Of that 70%. The third assignment, I remember, was actually the Murphy assignment. <laughs> so that was 11%, okay? The megalomania assignment will be the fourth assignment. That'll be 22%, twice as much, okay? And then, of course, the data journalism assignment will be 44% of it, again, of that 70%, okay? That's a roughly, because it doesn't quite equal out to 100. So it's 11% for the first one, 11% for the second assignment, 11% for the third assignment out of that 70, 22 for the four, fourth, and then 44 for the fifth, okay? So, yes, I'm hoping that, you know, once I get your megalomania assignments back to you, that you rewrite those well, they turn out well, 
we ended up having like you know good grades on the Murphy assignments. I'm hoping that you guys get a boost for that, even though there was some confusion over, you know, <laughs> with, you know, getting the stuff in and stuff like that. Probably granted way too many extensions. So uh, hopefully that's all been resolved by now. Um, all right. All right. And um, so yes. So that's actually um, you know. That was that was that was an important yes, and I was actually just checking to make sure we didn't have any discussion points in this class, so that won't be a part of your class participation grade, obviously. I didn't my writing for media class, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, all right. So anyway, um, what do we got here? So data journalism. Let's go to the assignment for, because the assignment basically covers everything. Okay, uh, about data journalism. Now this again, this has become the actual um, um, one thing that's really become like a real outgrowth, if anything, is probably a better term out of, because with the internet, you're able to actually do things like the five tools I talked about, as, as opposed to this the dead tree news, old fashioned newspaper we talked about. Now we can actually add extensions and we can actually like have things like, you know, um, sidebars and stuff like that that are actually part of the package. Everything's a package. So, um, so we can do, and, and so what came out of that essentially was that the idea of things like lists and uh, graphs showing, you know, increases and decreases, they, those were things were done with newspapers before, but now they've become much more prolific. I mean, you know, when you look at like things like Yelp, this is exactly like why Yelp has become so important, has become um, so popular because it does exactly those types of things. It does like lists, okay? Um, you know, best restaurants in the Brunswick. It's actually an assignment I used to do. Um, you know, TripAdvisor, you see it's on TripAdvisor, you see it's on Yelp, okay? And, you know, people rate these things and people enjoy these things and people use these things. And it's interesting, what's the Princeton one doing? as a sponsor result. But you see like Ramen Agomi, is that how you say that? Fat Cactus Katina, number three, number four, essentially. What the cluck? <laughs> Bistro plus bar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So anyway, so that's you know those sorts of things. It's actually considered graph material, basically lists, that sort of thing, and something you could probably put into a graph. Okay, a bar graph, a pie graph, anything. Okay, make sure the percentage of votes or something like that, the percentage of the rating that it got, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, probably a more common one is what you would see like on the New York Times, actually. They do a thing every day where they actually ha keep track of the COVID cases. And this actually will be related to your assignment, actually, okay? So, um, I mean, they usually accompany, they usually accompany stories. And again, provide, they provide that extension that a video provides and also a, a, a photo provides, okay? Going beyond, again, the idea that, as I've talked about in class, that digital media has become as much has made media much more of a visual media and people are looking more for maybe just something that's just written well they're looking for something that actually will be you know basically uh tantalize them visually something they can look at something that kind of will help paint the picture on a larger scale and on a fuller scale okay so if you actually go to the, the midsection of the new york times those will do is they'll actually provide essentially daily updates of what's going on in the coronavirus and there is actually some story material that comes with it, okay? Like state of the virus actually comes in sort of a, uh, this is actually considered essentially a graph in itself, bulleted material, okay? You see a lot more of this nowadays, things actually put in bullets, much easier for people to read one step at a time, one, you know, identifying different pieces of news, bits of news are coming out of the coronavirus nationally, okay? But what you'll see is this, okay? You'll see the newly reported cases. And as you can see, they've actually gone up a little bit again. And it's, you know, after they went down tremendously and in, in, in that's a lot of people give credit to the vaccines that happening, went only down to 12,000 daily, okay? Uh, but then the Delta virus hit, so they went back up, see? Again, painting that fuller picture. This really kind of like, again, beyond the written word, it really kind of gives people, it really helps people hit, hit home and because exactly where we are with this virus and how bad it really got when you see like a crest this high, okay? It's almost compared to ocean waves, right? And then you see it actually, this was the Delta resurgence, so basically Delta surge, 
it caused things to get back up again in September 2nd. That's when it hit its peak. But then once, you know, they say that once vaccines started to take shape again, and then the Delta virus had a habit of actually kind of burning off in other countries, stuff like that, it went back down to about 70,000 on October 30th. But now that they say that the weather's gotten colder and it's actually gone back up to 91,000, okay? Um, it hasn't hit its peak yet. There hasn't the summer or the September peak of 160, well, it's over a dozen, but it hasn't hit the highest peak yet, but it's still, you know, it's still going up. Hopefully this won't lead to lockdowns. There is some talk in these antivirals and everything. Hopefully that'll actually like, now we can actually treat these cases in the hospital. So maybe, you know, a year from now, this case total will not be as important because we'll be actually be able to treat these things as opposed to just having to rely on the vaccine. Um, you see again, lists of things, okay? Cases, tests, hospitalized, deaths. You know, again, the idea is to try to connect to every reader out there, okay? So you wanna have something that actually is simplistic. So this is even more simplistic than the written story, okay? 14 day change, tests, hospitalized, deaths, okay? All right. Um, all right, so again, become a very much more important component of the actual daily news feed of the New York Times and other publications, okay? All right, so, you know, and it's not just newspapers that do it, not just news organizations, but actual, like, like the state does it, and they have their own dashboard, okay? This actually is something you're gonna need to know. I actually provide this link. They provide, they actually used to provide, now, now that things have gone toward the idea of like trying to get more vaccinations out there, they actually put the first tab of their dashboard of, of where they are in terms of vaccinations, okay? Maybe that's more of a positive spin on things, okay? Um, the cases and trends are right here, okay? So they show basically, they keep track of where the cases are in New Jersey and especially, and they'll even show like which counties have more than other counties, okay? All right. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here. All right, so let's go to the assignment itself now, okay? Um, also, one more other thing is actually a lot of times, you know, graphs actually help also help people become more interactive um, uh, with what's uh, going on out there. The idea of actually engaging people, not just to get them to read the story, but also get them to actually participate has become much more important. It actually helps keep people on the site and engagement is such an important thing in journalism nowadays in digital because, the, because a lot of people, a lot of the ads, again, as I talked before, a lot of people actually uh, buy ads for a site. They actually, one of the things they look at is not just that you click on the ad, but they want to know if you're actually looking at the site and how long. And they'll, adver they'll actually advertise on a site where people will look at, like a place like the New York Times, they'll, they'll stay, they'll go to the site and stay. The, and they know that actually gives them a better chance to actually look at their ad, okay? All right, so one of the things they do, so one of the things you'll see a lot more now is you'll see actual like polls, people will actually participate in polls, okay? Um, this is actually, you'll see like, I mean, they're not scientific or anything like that, but you know, this is actually like some news outlet that actually asked people in North Carolina, basically who won the, the uh, Ben Challenge halftime show. You can see that people are already engaged in it. And here was the actual results. I guess the poll's over. You can see, oh, yeah, 1,000 people liked it. That's a lot. You know, then 69% liked Alcorn State and 39% liked North Carolina Central. Again, not scientific, but it gives people a feeling that they're involved, they're engaged. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go to the um, assignment itself. Okay. So you're going to incorporate all the elements of data journalism, all the elements of data journalism, namely graphics, and also a headline, which somebody we talked about in like the, the section one class the other day. This is actually going to connect to that lesson I gave on, um, on actually uploading a story to the um, to my Rutgers Reporter Next site and how it's typically done on in a web, sy web system or a content management system is you typically not only have to write the story, but you have to supply the headline too. So we'll talk about that too. Okay. So you're gonna incorporate all the elements of data journalism and digital journalism, namely graphics, okay? Um, graphics are not just pie charts, they're lists and people like lists. People just like to just know, like to just know, they, they want to compare, okay? So now with digital media, we have more leeway in providing this kind of information. We can provide the tables, the pie charts, or the simple lists 
Um, I should need the word up better. Actually, people want to do more than just know, they want to compare, okay? Um, now with digital media, we have more leeway in providing this kind of information. We can provide the tables, the pie charts, or the simple lists that would get buried inside a newspaper, okay? We can also do polls that allow people to react. Poll Daddy, Google Forms, okay? I'm gonna be asking you guys to actually like supply a poll for this. And one of the most common ways people do it is actually through Google Forms, okay? Um, we will talk about that once we actually get back in, in person in class, if anybody has an issue with that. But I'm gonna actually ask you guys to actually do a poll and then actually send it to me so then I can distribute it beforehand, before the, before the assignments do, so I can distribute around the class and get people to participate, okay? Um, all right, so here's what you need to do, okay? So each person will interview three to five people and get the reaction to the current state of the coronavirus pandemic in New Jersey or in the country, or if you don't live in New Jersey, okay? Or in the country, or in the country, meaning across the country, because not everybody I have actually lives in New Jersey. So if you're not in New Jersey or maybe you're gonna be home for the Thanksgiving holiday or something like that, you're not in the country state, you're not gonna come back. Maybe you wanna do that, okay? Or maybe it's just easier for you to actually like, if you don't live in New Jersey, it's easier for you to actually like, you know, um, um, you know, I'll actually will create a discussion point for this too, just so you know, okay? Um, to get people involved, but also, you know, to give you an idea that like, you know, I wanted you to contact whoever is like most accessible to you for this story because I want you to basically concentrate on the actual, you know, finer points of this story, the actual intricacies of the story, as opposed to having to chase people down. Okay. All right. Um, and I want you guys to actually write a, please write a 500, 800 word story. Uh, do a straight lead that summarizes how people feel. Okay. Are they scared? Are they hopeful? Are they dealing with it? Because, you know, like I said, there's been an uptick in cases. Use transitions and anecdotes you like you would do when you typically write a story. Okay, and then please edit the story, which is number two on the list of th you know things you need to actually um, you know do when you actually like put together a comprehensive digital media package. Okay. Um, okay, please write the headline for this story as we address. This is an area we addressed in both sections when we uploaded your Murphy stories to the Records Report next site in class. Remember that headline is. Typically in a condensed form with the words with words removed to give it faster action. So, you know, remember like when we talked about that, um, you know, again, the idea, it's like what they call headline ease essentially, okay? So, you know, instead of saying, you know, you remove words like the and uh, the articles, that's what, you know, basically it would get in the way of headlines. So if you would say, if you, instead of writing like Governor Murphy, Or actually, let's just use the headline for this potential headline for the assignment. Okay. Um, let's say you say New Jersey residents, let's say you're Israeli, New Jersey residents are getting more scared or more upset. Oh, this is true. Okay. But about COVID, now that cases are on the rise. That's actually a sentence for your story, perhaps. Okay, but it would not be a headline, okay? The headline would basically take out something along the line. Actually, first of all, it condense things down, look for areas to condense. So maybe this would be NJ, okay? NJ residents, maybe even just say NJ, okay? NJ residents, and it's typically written again in present tense, getting, or it would be getting upset, okay, about COVID. And then again, the idea with cutting down as much words as possible, but in present tense with cases rising. The idea that it's actually in present tense gives people the feeling that are actually, this is something that's actually active. There's action happening here, okay? Um, it's a headline technique to actually grab people's attention, okay? All right, let's go back to the story, okay? Um, all right, so you mean the headline could just go on the top of the story, okay? Um, some of you have been writing headlines anyway, and I appreciate that, but it wasn't required for every assignment, but now this is the one assignment where it will actually be required, okay? Um, okay, now please search for daily case totals on New Jersey's publicly available dashboard. Now, again, I mean, this. I'm assuming everybody's gonna do New Jersey residents, but if you're not, let me know, and then 
let's say you're going to, you know, maybe, maybe you'd want to like rely on that New York times map. If you're going to do like a nation or maybe you would, if you're living in a different state, you want to just like do the state you're in and then I can help you find whatever dashboard they have. Well, let's just talk about New Jersey for the time being. Okay. So again, the idea with this graphic will help illuminate the pattern of cases that we've had lately. Okay. Um, now, Okay, so the poll is like one serves as one graphic element of the, of the story. But you know, one thing that you know people ought to know about like graphics for typical digital news stories is they're typically handled not in a way where you actually have to build something from scratch. I want people to understand that because again, this is not a class where you would essentially build things from scratch, <laughs> or you do things again where you actually try to design things in a way that it's like on the level of an expert. Okay. What you're trying to do is you're trying to actually do things so that um, they are done in a, an expeditious way as fast as possible so it can be posted as quickly as possible, okay? Um, so, you know, so again, the idea is that, you know, we've had a situation with these cases that they've gone down, they've gone up, and they've gone down, and they've gone up. So, so instead of actually building something from scratch, okay, what we do is we typically would actually do something like if it's a publicly available website where, where the information on the site is not copyrighted or, or it's like it's an independent private industry or publication or company or something like that, like the New York Times, you wouldn't want to take information from there. But you'd want to take it from a place where essentially the information is actually publicly uh, dispensed. And that would be a government website, which is what this COVID dashboard is. OK, so what I'm going to ask you guys to do actually is to provide a graphic from this dashboard, okay? And um, this shows the cases and trends. And you can do that, it just takes a long time to get up, sorry about that. You can do that essentially by going to the cases and trends tab, okay? Um, and what I'm asking you guys to do is just to take a snapshot of this. That's actually the only thing you really have to do for this. I know it's kind of silly to actually go through this whole thing, graphics and everything, but this is exactly like what they do. <laughs> it's in order to like add elements to a story and put it online. You go to the case count section right here, and there it is. That's actually where it shows again that up and up and down roller coaster situation with the cases. And then, you know, if you do on an Apple computer, command shift four, you can actually get into the snapshot mode and take a picture. And there's your picture right there. And there's your graphic right there. Okay. All right. That's how the graphics are not typically built from scratch. And now look, if you want to do that, that's fine, but I don't want it to get in the way of your reporting. You also need to do a video for this assignment and because that's another reason why I'm doing this, doing this, um, this asynchronous lecture now because I want people to be able to start in this early, okay? Um, all right, because you have a lot to do here, okay? All right, um, but I don't want you to like waste time in actually building things from scratch. I want you to do things that would be normally handled by a multimeter reporter. And they would typically just essentially snapshot that graphic from a government page, okay? And you can submit that as part of your assignment too, okay? On Canvas, right? So again, please put together a poll, one per person, um, that asks people this question in some fashion, how are you dealing with the current state of the, of the COVID pandemic? This is something, again, I get this should be through class. When it's done, please supply the link to me. And I really suggest you getting that to me before the actual session is over, okay, before the, for December 13th, okay? But please include a picture that goes with the story. Again, that could be just like one of the people you're interviewing for the, uh, for the story, okay? Um, again, think rule thirds, um, that's it. You know, maybe some background that kind of, again, like shows the landscape of the area. And also please do a video, yes, two minutes long, um, you know, it follows the same rules we've done before with an interview and B-roll, okay? Again, you really need uh, to, um, I will actually add, actually, I have a link on basically how to do a video. I will add that to this assignment here, okay? Uh, but because I think a lot of people have kind of like, you know, not a lot of people, some people actually have not quite gotten what that, what that is and what, what you need to do, but it's actually very simple. The idea is to basically expand the view that people have of the interview. It's not just the person who's being interviewed, but you want to show exactly like where they are and what's around them. And that's sort of thing. I mean, that should be connected to what they have to say, okay? Um, and I actually do have a, it's actually on your modules, if you see it right here, I actually have a video where I go into that and I'll add that to the actual assignment, the link to that, okay?
All right. Um, so I've got my essay and, written. Yeah, that's actually and just I've worked, So, all right. So, so now I'm going to show you how I. Thank you. Anyway, all right. So yes, I'll add that to the actual assignment. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. And where are we here exactly? Let's just do stuff. All right. So that's it, really, guys. And uh, please, I hope you watch this whole thing. Um, this will again will be due December 13th. And let me know if you have any questions. We will be talking about this in class and discussing it. Okay. Thanks very much. And I'll be talking to you.